Um, hey, look who joined us. Where you been all day, mister? Oh, you're here at the end because the work's all done. Ah, uh, you, you know, your claws are kind of sharp. Really? I mean, that doesn't feel really good. Anywho, uh, yeah, this close. I'm ready to uh, start it, but I got to put some fuel to it and then make sure my new fuel lines aren't leaking and do a couple other things. And I got to run inside for a few minutes. I don't know if I'm coming back out tonight. or I mean, I'm coming back out tonight. I don't know if I'm starting it tonight because it's going to be late and loud. We'll probably try to, you know, vroom vroom it just a touch. Maybe. I don't know. I'll be back. Welcome back to the Montana Garage. Uh, a couple days later, man, this place is a freaking disaster. Um, I think where I left off, I was struggling mightily to put the rear tire back on and uh, it was already hard and now it's harder. Let me tell you why. When I put the brakes back on the car, looking through the wheel here, the brake caliper is right about here. Somehow, when I had the brakes all installed before I disassembled them, the brake caliper was right about here. And I don't know what is different. I don't know if I had maybe the, uh, the brake mounting caliper mounting things, whatever they're called, swapped side to side, if one's right and one's wrong. But the problem is now that the caliper is up higher in the wheel, on the wheel, it's up higher in the wheel well. And when I try to put the, force the wheel in, the rim hits the caliper and it just, as you can see, I got them on there, but I didn't think I was going to, and I'm actually a little bit worried about getting off. Before the caliper was lower and the back of the rim would go above the caliper and it just let me kind of tilt it in a little bit better and it made it a lot easier. So I don't know if uh, the brakes are designed to be up, the caliper is designed to be up here or if it's designed to be down there, or if it can be either or, or will one work better as far as braking, you know, than the other. I think it's probably, I think the way it is now is probably right. I don't know why, it just looks better having it right up here. But I have video and pictures obviously of before and it was, down here. If it's going to work just as well as far as stopping the car, I need to take them back apart and put it back down there, whatever was different. Because this whole wheel changing thing is a nightmare now. So two steps forward, one step back. That's the motto. I should write that on the side of the car or something, I guess. I'm not dealing with that today. I got the wheels on and uh, they're going to stay on until this thing drives and then we'll deal with that. But before this thing drives, I thought means it's all up in the air like so, it'd be a good idea for me to take care of the drive shaft loop down there somewhere before I uh, took it off the ramps. And uh, so I came out last night to start kind of messing with that. And you know, nothing's easy. So I got some issues, I got a plan, uh, but I was out here for a couple hours last night just trying to figure out how to do it, what to do. Came up with a plan and then I got distracted doing something else. So that's where I'm starting today. Drive shaft loop into the car. Hopefully somehow, because it doesn't work as designed, of course. Let's crawl under the car and take a quick look-see at uh, what the situation is with this bad boy. I can barely get myself under here. I'm not sure, Ooh, that was loud. I'm not sure the best way to show you guys this. Drive shaft is uh, missing in action while well, it's right there, but I had to take it down for this to fit in here. So this is the drive shaft loop I bought. It's designed for this end of this here to weld to the frame rail frame rail right there or wherever it has to be within six inches of the u-joint uh, so the problem i'm having and of course this isn't for a 55 chevy it's just a universal type kit or whatever that's just you know supposed to work or you got to make it work or whatever um i can't even get back up here with one-handed so here's the problem i have so the bar in my situation in order to clear the drive shaft with just imagine the drive shaft is right there in order for this to clear the top of the drive shaft, this has to sit on top of the frame. It's designed or the instructions say, you know, you weld it to the frame. But if I do that, it doesn't go above the drive shaft. So I have to put it above the frame. I wanted to uh, just weld it to like a little maybe piece of angle and bolt it here and weld it to that so I could take it in and out. But the problem with that is once I do that and it sticks past, there's actually not enough room for me to like push it in and get in and out because it won't, you know, it won't go in here far enough to get that side far enough. And then plus I have, I'm upside down now, but I have this brake line. Of course my brake line is right there. I just got done bleeding the brakes and uh, I might have to replace this brake line. So that's a joy. But what I've decided to do uh, I don't know. Again, I'm just make this up as I go. I don't know if it's right. This is just a drive shaft loop. I mean, if the drive shaft, if the U joint fails and the drive shaft 
banging around in there. It's got to be strong enough to contain it. But uh, we're not towing cars or it's not lifting the weight of the car or holding the suspension. So I don't think it has to be like super duper strong. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the end of this bad boy to look like so. Can you guys see that? I'm looking at it. And then we're going to set that on top of the frame like so and weld here and then on each end on top of the frame so i got my little welding gun down here and i made sure i'd be able to somewhat get a weld you know here and here once i notch this down so once i notch it that little bit i can scoot it back to the right spot because it also hits the top now that i get above the drive shaft once i'm back far enough to where i gotta be it actually hits the floorboard so when i notch this down it'll drop it down to miss this but stay above the drive shaft and then we'll have to show you this when i get back out there but then there's a loop part that uh, attaches down here to go around the drive shaft obviously so and again this is a nhr thing not everybody has one of these drive shaft loops probably not a bad idea for any car with sticky tires because uh you know u joints are probably the weak link at this point my transmission is probably my weak link but uh required for nhra i don't remember the specs you'll have to look it up on your own don't take my word for it is it 1149 or even 13 something if you got sticky tires or slicks i don't remember I'm doing it because the NHR tells me I have to if I'm gonna put this thing on the track. Brief overview of that, because I don't know if you can see it from under the car. This is gonna sit on the frame and I have to notch it out like this. So then that part sits on the frame. We're gonna weld there and around there and then attach the, well, I was gonna show you the loop, but it's missing in action. Somewhere there's a loop that will uh, attach like that. So uh, first thing I gotta do is I gotta cut this a little short. I already cut this off there. I just wanted to get, I couldn't even get the bar up in there to see how it fit because it was so long. So I knew I was cutting it long to sit on top of the frame. I gotta cut it just a hair shorter on each side. So it misses the seam on top of the frame. So we'll cut it, notch it. We gotta obviously grind a little bit on the firewall. I have brake lines in the way on one side to drop down and try to get out of the way. On the other side, I got the old gas line you know, not right there, but not far from there. So I'm gonna have to try to find a way to make sure that's covered up good. The last thing I need is a spark burning a hole through that. You know, it's like a braided line, but still hot stuff is hot stuff. If it goes through there, then boom. So we gotta cover the brake line or fuel line up. I don't know if I should remove it. That's probably worse because I'm gonna spill gas. Once we get this drive shaft loop in there, if we get it in there, I'm not like done under the car, but once I get that under there, it's been raining for the last three days, but it's warm and it's drying out today. I'm gonna get this thing off the blocks, start it up and hopefully drive it out of the shop today, probably tomorrow, but soon, stay tuned. All right, I found the loop part. So this will need then trimmed. Quite a bit of this will get cut off and then the drive shaft goes through that bad boy. Gotta make it happen. Update time from out here in the Montana garage. You can see I got my welding attire on or some of it. Uh, I didn't learn my lesson. I burned the heck out of my arm. It just all peeled off when I was welding in the purchase. Actually, it wasn't when I was welding the spring purchase on the axle. It was the hour or two of practice I did beforehand where my arm, I could feel it getting hot and I thought I should go put some long sleeves on and I didn't. And uh, the evidence is pretty much gone now, but that, the old bicep, the little tiny bicep there, she was burned pretty bad. It just all peeled off like a sunburn here the other day, so. Anywho, I'm just doing a little bit of welding today, so I'm not too worried about it. But this is where we're at. We got the cross shaft trimmed, how it's gonna fit and notch and weld onto the frame. It comes with these two little inserts or whatever they are, and that's what welds to the cross shaft. And then the loop itself, bolt. once we get everything how we want it, you'll drill, we'll drill a hole through here and that'll bolt on. So this part can come on and off to make it easier to put your drive shaft in if you need it to. I will have to also trim these legs down. It only needs to be like five inches from here to here. So the step we're at right now is tacking these on in place to make sure I have it centered right. We'll crawl back under there throw the drive shaft back in and make sure all this is going to work then we'll trim the legs and do the same thing and once we're all good then we'll burn these in for reels and then after that's done and drilled holes drilled and we know everything fits then just like everything else we gotta take it back out and paint it and then wait tick tock tick tock for the paint to dry so i don't know if i'm gonna get this welded in today or not so either later tonight or tomorrow then we'll crawl back under there and weld it onto the frame and like i said i gotta find a way to kind of cover some gas lines and brake lines and hopefully we don't make a bomb out here anyways let's throw some sparks and get this bad boy done huh all right well i forgot to turn the camera on while i was doing the 
welding and stuff I just talked about because, well, I'm not that smart. Uh, I need to get a new uh, director or somebody in charge of camera work that knows what they're doing. But for now, it's just me and I don't know what I'm doing on the camera end or the car end, but hey, we're uh, faking it and thank you guys for watching. But anyways, this is what we came up with while you guys weren't watching. I tacked these little guys on, bam, and then that's the length I cut the loop to, so hopefully that's gonna fit. We're gonna crawl back under the car and find out. Once again, it's time for Tales from the Garage 4 from Montana Garage with Brad, your humble host. Uh, I've been crawling in and out of here way too many times the last couple days, but uh, I guess that's all part of it. I wish the car was a little higher up in the air. And uh, you know what would be really cool is if uh, somebody would invent some sort of a device that would lift the car you know, way up in the air, like so high that you could maybe even like walk underneath it and stuff. Yeah, I know, I don't have one of those. Let's crawl back under here and see how our drive shaft loop installation is going. I got a light, probably in the wrong spot. I'll come over here. So uh, here's the old drive shaft in here. Does that help any at all? No, it won't stick. We're upset, I'm upside down, I guess you're not. Drive shaft, and here's our little device we're putting in right now. And somewhere in my hand, I just had the rest of it. Here's the little loop, and I was almost worried I cut it too far, but I think she's about right, or could even be a little shorter. I don't want it hanging down too low. Right now, it's just about the same as a transmission cross member, so we can probably call that and let it work. So I think everything looks like it's in place. Uh, this is where I gotta weld that to the frame. Same thing over there, and if uh, I'm, I kinda got a bad case of crank neck going, cause I'm kinda stuck in the position I'm in. I'm in. But uh, if you can see where I gotta weld it over there, we got a brake line right in the way, so we may have to do something about that. Hopefully I can just pull it down a little further, weld it, and then get it re-secured. I really don't wanna re-bleed the brakes. Anyhow, I think this part of it's good, so I'm gonna take it back out, and I can weld this, weld the little insert solid. I'll drill the holes and put the bolts in there, and then I'll paint this thing. And then we'll move on to something else while it's drying and come back in a little bit after it dries, at least a little bit and uh, zap it under the car. Fries are done. All right, what do I do with my gloves this time? Time for some new gloves. That finger is not super protected any longer. Not the best. I need a light so I can see what I'm doing. That one's a little better. Right in the light. Ooh, hot! Here's that unprotected finger. One little tiny spot I missed there. That doesn't matter. We'll buzz it. Whoops, that's no good. Hey! That was bad. My tip got caught in the groove, in the groove, in the uh, knot. Anyways, good thing that's not gotta be strong. Who still fits on there? That's all that really matters, right? Mess on the floor. I guess I could have went right outside the door and done that. That would have been smarter. Oh well, it'll dry. All right, my one ugly weld in the side really got tricky there. I guess it doesn't have to go on all the way. It's not too bad, just that spot right there got a little ugly because I kind of got stuck in the groove, like I said, but the rest of it's all welded up. So uh, where are we at? We got, oh, I got to drill some holes and bolt this thing together. Let's find a drill. We got it all made, so now it's time to paint it up. I hit it with some 220. Now I'm just kind of cleaning it off, make sure I got my greasy handprints out of everything. We'll let her set for a minute and paint it black. Paint shaking, coming right up. All right, you guys know how I roll around here by now. We got one coat of, one or two coats of etch primer, and then we'll hit her with some chassis black, and she'll be ready to go. I don't know that we'll get it installed tonight. I'll probably let it sit for a few hours to dry, and then, uh, I don't know, I'll probably just work on some other stuff tonight, finish installing my gauges or something. And then we'll put this thing in the car in the morning, and then uh, hopefully, I don't know if we're gonna go for a drive drive, or at least gonna back it out of the shop, see if the clutch works, and uh, see what else we can you know, what needs worked on and what we can uh, mess up or what we have to do before we actually go for a drive. That's the plan. It 
is the next day and I am back for more out in the Montana garage. I cleaned up a little bit last night before I headed in. So this morning, the plan was to come out and get this darn, what's it called? A uh, drive shaft loop welded into the car. One of the things that makes me a bit nervous about that is the fuel line, even though it's on the opposite side of the frame, is right here, and I gotta weld like right here and even on top. So there's gonna be, you know, showers of sparks and whatnot. So I was just gonna kinda cover it with a, you know, blanket or something real good. But I've kinda came up with a different plan. Shocker. I have been told by a couple people that the way I have my fuel pressure regulator, that's the little silver guy, on the firewall there. The way I have that mounted and the fuel lines right here is not NHRA approved. So I looked in the rule book and it doesn't say you can't mount your fuel pressure regulator on the firewall, but it does say something like uh, no junction blocks within six inches of the drive shaft, or not drive shaft, flywheel area. Anyways, something about that. It doesn't say exactly you can't put your pressure regulator there, so I never really caught it or didn't know about it. And a couple people have pointed it out, so I've been searching the forums a little bit, and it seems like it's one of those kind of deals that uh, some people say, oh, I've had mine mounted on the firewall for years, and nobody's ever said anything, and some people say, in my track, they wouldn't let you race. I guess to follow the rules, it shouldn't be there, I guess. Um, so I thought all I really need to do to move it is I bought one other fitting, and then I have a little extra hose and I kind of had a plan of what I was going to do and I was thinking about just leaving it and then if the tech guy said it wasn't good I could fix it on site but if I fix it now then I can take the fuel line apart and drain the fuel line out of there and actually just kind of scooch it away from where I'm welding so I think that's what I'm going to do first is mess with this fuel pressure regulator situation. So my new plan is this. Here's the fuel line, and right about here, for whatever reason, I decided to turn and go inside of the frame. I guess because I get all this crap in the way. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna keep it on this side of the frame, shoot right through this little gap in the frame, come up above this little guy, because if I put the inner fender wells on, they mount to that. And then I'll scooch above the roll bar here, and then I'm gonna go through this little fitting, this little, uh, not fitting, but uh, this is where the body mount is. I'm gonna make this hole bigger. And then, as you can see, I got a hole in the frame that was already here. I'm gonna make that hole bigger, use one of these fancy rubber grommet dealy bobbers I got from my buddy Terry from the Tri-5 Mob. I'm gonna mount that right there. That way the fuel line has a good rubber, you know, surface It's not gonna braid on the frame. The fuel line then sneaks through the frame right here. Oh, there's my light. Could have been showing you guys with light. And then it's gonna pop out right here. So we'll get rid of the old fuel line. The new one's gonna pop out right here. I should be able to put one of these little uh, insulated isolator things, clamps or whatnot right here to hold it away from touching any metal here. And then it'll just kind of follow this line. And instead of going to the carburetor, then I'm gonna come over here and mount the fuel pressure regulator on this little inner interior radiator panel or whatever it's called. So fuel line will come into the regulator, come out of the regulator, come back down to this frame rail and then up to the carburetor. So I had one extra piece of fuel line that's long enough to replace this line. So I'll get rid of the regulator, change the 90 degree to a regular fitting. I had to buy a T or a junction, just a junction block, I think, where these two ones will screw together. Then I have one longer piece of hose that'll get me to the new regulator spot. And then this piece of hose can then get me from the regulator to the carburetor. All right, so I got a plan. Now I just gotta execute. So I started by loosening up. We were taking off some of the clamps down in the bottom here. I wonder, maybe I need to do this one down there too. So I need the right size, huh? This way, if I'm down here, I can drink some of it. That'll be good. At least wear some of it. A smart guy would have brought a rag with him probably. I should grab something. I'm not sure how much fuel is going to come pouring out of here, but I would assume some. Yeah. Yep, there we go. If we tip her upside down, we get some. Well, I didn't get a drink in That's good, I guess. All right, so that was step number, well, I guess, two. First, I loosened the clamps. I removed the clamps, and we got that line. And I think I got it out of the way good enough to weld now, too. Now we'll take this guy off of here. Yeah, let's see. We might as well get... Here are these clamps, all this is gonna change. I don't even know if you guys can see what I'm doing. Say it with me now, what's the motto? Why do something once when you can do it twice? Get twice the experience this way. Twice as many chances to drop your Allen right? 
Twice as many chance to drill and tap holes in your frame. Some of them I can reuse, but some of it's gonna be different. This line in the end still gets to be the line that goes to the carb. So I think I can leave that part. I'll just have to put shortly to put a new end on it. And I reroute it. All right, so that guy can wait over here till he's ready to be used. All right, fuel line's off. And we gotta go inside. I wasn't really stoked about this part of this deal anyways, because the fuel pressure regulator mounts to, technically I don't think it's to the fire firewall, it's to the tow board, I guess, but it mounts right there. I was gonna buzz those off, but I didn't like really having those bolts sticking up right there. But uh, I guess we're solving that problem too. What size do you think that was? 11 30 seconds or 38? I'm not that smart, so I'll bring them both because whichever one I pick will be wrong. And that means I have to be able to find them both. And that could be a chore. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. I think it's uh, 11 30 seconds. Huh, I was wrong. 38. All right, we'll be back. All right, stellar camera work once again. I took a picture of the stuff I was just showing you in video, but you're never going to see it now. It's uh, It's gone to... It's in the past. Um, so I got to explain it. I needed to, oh, well, you can't see that part yet. Hold on, hold on, wait a second. All right, uh, so this started as a little hole. If you can see the hole in the far side, that's how it started. And I needed to be a bigger hole. And I tried to use the hole saw, but because there was already a hole there, it, you know, tried to do this number because the little center bit doesn't have a place to drill into. So I had to use the old carbide bit uh, on this tool and just kind of sneak up on it. Buzzy, 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 and then, you know, check it, buzzy, buzzy, check it. We made quite a pile of metal shavings here. And it actually, this thing removes metal pretty quick, so I really like that thing. So what we were trying to do is get this bad boy to fit in there. And, uh, well, bam! So I have another one of these that I just went and painted that I've drilled the metal section out of. So it'll be black and I'll just self tap it or maybe I'll thread or I'll uh, tap some threads in there, one or the other, see what I got. And then the fuel holes will go through there. I really have to make it go through this little bracket here too. So I'm just gonna widen this hole big enough to either make sure it doesn't hit or we'll throw a, some sort of grommet in there too. Several distractions and running to get even more fittings later. We're back. Uh, I found a place for my pressure, fuel pressure regulator. I just noticed. I was standing over there and mounting it kind of upside down. I was like, yeah, that looks level. And from back here, it's like, yeah, I wasn't even close to level. Uh, might fix that, might not, I don't know. So this hose is eventually gonna wind its way around here, but for now I had to fish it through the frame and out the hole. I uh, drilled this out and got a nice grommet in there that's just a smidge bigger than the fuel line. And this is, always, this is all gonna be a pain in the butt if I ever need to change the fuel line or whatever. I can't, I'll have to take the fittings off, you know, to get it through the holes or whatnot, but. How often is the guy supposed to do that? Probably every day in my case. So then I got my little grommet here from my friend Terry. Now that's gotta go in there. Notice I can't have a fitting on this yet. So I'll have to put the fitting on once I get it all figured out where it's gonna call home and whatnot. So we got the grommet on, now we gotta go through this grommet. Or is it even gonna work out? Let's so get that grommet up in there. Maybe there we go. I bought some little screws to mount this grommet thing in place. There we go. That slot above that bracket. Oh, and hopefully we have enough to reach our destination of the other fuel hose. Should I have folded up here? Uh, I don't know if you guys can see me. I guess I miscalculated. I either miscalculated or miscounted or, I don't know. I thought I had enough fittings to do this, but as you can see, I got one of these fancy blue and red ones on. Not really my style, doesn't match anything else on the car, but I was one short and I happened to have two of these in my uncle's toolbox from, uh, I'm sure he bought them in like 1990 something. These are Earl's, this is Russell, but I'm sure it'll seal that. Russell recommends using only Russell fittings, but it's still just a hose. It feels like it's uh, on there good and tight and whatever for me, so. Uh, we'll replace it maybe someday, but I put, I put it on the one under the car, so only you guys know about it, okay? So now I have to kind of route, figure the route of the rest of this line out and put an end on here, screw a couple insulated clamps in place and, uh, We'll be back in business. But before we do all that, while I got the fuel line disconnected, I can take this half and move her back there away from the old weld zone. I think I'm gonna clean up my metal shavings so I don't get them all in my back and my hair and my neck when I'm crawling under the car. And then we will, oh, I guess I gotta do a little bit of grinding on the inside of the frame. And we gotta get this drive shaft loop welded in place. I've been trying to do that for like three days now. Let's get that welded in and then we will commence with the fuel line once again. Grind your shield cam time. I never know if this worked or not until I look at it when I'm done. Oh, 
Nothing like grinding off fresh paint. I don't think you guys will fit under the car with me with the grinder shield cam, so uh, I guess I gotta do this one on my own. We can try. It might be worth a good life. If I could just get past the cord. Dang it. Ah! Scared myself. Alright, I had a light. Somewhere. I just had it. There it is. You need to get yourself one of these, by the way. Link in the video description. They're pretty handy. Woo! You guys just fell. All right, where's my magic marks at? There's some. I have no idea what you guys are looking at. Probably the back of my light right there. All right, somewhere in here. Wood. Getting welded. We'll do a little touch up painting later. this other side what can we do about it here's where I got the brake line in the way see, I don't know what you guys see I already said that so in theory I'm gonna have the brake line go above that bar now so it's gonna have to be there while I'm doing the welding so I probably gotta find a way to cover that up too we're gonna torch a hole right through that bad boy and start over on the brake it's gonna be right in my way when I'm trying to weld I'm sure it's already in my way when I'm trying to do this Know, hopefully I got some of that paint off of there. In theory, I think if I just get a good weld right here, that's probably... It's just, you know, holding the drive shaft in place if it falls apart. All right, uh, I'm going to look and see what you guys saw and see if you're going to see this at all, or we'll skip it. We'll, we'll see. Thanks for uh, coming along under the car. Show you guys my uh, kind of sad attempt at protecting stuff from welding. So I know uh, cloth, rags, and cardboard are not welding proof but it's better than nothing right so i moved the fuel line just it's gone it's way over there this is a shield to the fuel pump so hopefully i mean the fuel pump's above it i guess but that's where kind of like the filter and the line is um, i think the fuel pump's far enough away and it's you know metal so we got her centered up we got some cardboard on our brake line i or brake line it is this is the battery cable and so we got some cardboard and rag on there just keep sparks from burning through that and then on the other side see right yonder is the brake line so I got it protected with some cardboard and then I got some sockets jammed in here to kind of hold it up out of my way. So these should probably fall in my face while I'm welding. That'll be nice. If I can get just a good weld here on each side, I think I can get the torch in if this brake line is not going to hinder me. At least on the other side, for sure, I can get the torch in or the welding, welding nozzle, torch, I don't know, gun thing. I'll get the welder thing in here and try to get a little bit more weld on each top. But uh, it is what it is. I think, again, we can get her welded in good enough. Oh, I think I left my gas off. Perfect. Hmm, it's on. Seems weird. Can I hear it? Well, I got gas. Well, that didn't sound good. You know what I mean. I guess my nozzle was about three fourths plugged up. That can't help, I guess. Who can do any better on this side? Where am I at? Something seems weird, as usual, when I'm trying to weld stuff. Oh, it's acting like. There's no gas. You kind of feel a little breeze down here. Where's that coming from? All right. Uh, hopefully we'll be back with something welded that might actually stay in place. I don't know. That seems better. I had the welder right here and the fan I think was blowing my gas away or something i don't know it seemed like you know how the welds grow like them fourth of july worms if you don't have gas on that's what it was doing and the gas was on well it looks like a weld not a good weld but a weld nonetheless instead of a fourth of july worm 
Oh, wasn't ready for that one. You know, that one did, ah, bark in my shoe. That one did the little worm grow thing again. What the crap? There's no wind over here. Oh, dang it. Does anybody else struggle as much as me at freaking everything? God, I don't know why I do this stuff. All right, I'm back. I don't know what the hell's going on. I haven't messed with the welder, but I did. You guys saw me grind this stuff off, but I guess I never really wiped it down and maybe I didn't grind off far enough and this uh, paint is causing contamination. So I, of course it's pretty much impossible to do now. There's shit in the way. The grinder won't get in the right angle. So, but I wire wheeled it, tried to clean everything off the best I could to see if maybe that's causing our worm growing issues. That seemed better. I'm trying to fill this little corner hole in a little bit. See all that paint burning off? I think I just, like I said, didn't have it clean enough. Yeah, you hear how funny that sound? I think and it looks pretty darn ugly. I just, there's too much paint up there. I didn't get it cleaned off. Well, this tends to be the case with everything I do. That was a freaking adventure. Totally was just, I didn't have the, uh, you know, you saw me with the uh, grinder shield cam. I ground the stuff off and I was kind of like, ah, I think I'm getting it up there. You gotta be a little more thorough about your paint grinding. I did the, you know, this part here pretty good. But what I didn't do after I did that is I didn't come back and like wipe off the residue. And so uh, when you go to weld, it looked just like there was no gas on, like it would, it was a weird sound, weird color, and then the little welds would grow like the little worms from the 4th of July. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but once I got it cleaned off, I mean, it looks like, you know, it almost looks like I pretend like I know how to weld, I guess. But you should see, I didn't even try to weld the top of this one because I, well, I did just the corner and it just did one of the big worm things. I actually ground it off with the little uh, die grinder thing. But uh, look at this again. Bottom of that's not too bad, but then this, the top of it, I tried to weld a bead up there and it looks like literal uh, terribleness. I don't know this one's not any better. I didn't look at it. I mean, it's all porosity and bubbly and anywho, I don't know. It seems to be held in place. So it is what it is. I don't know. I Every time I feel like I know how to weld, I have something like this happen and it's a nightmare disaster incompetent session but uh anyways it's welded in let's get i got to get all these clamps back in place try to fix the brake line on this side we'll get the drive shaft put in put the little the little loop actually on or the hoop and uh then we'll come back and finish the fuel line okay drive shaft is looped fuel system is put back together so we got the fuel line sneaking through here Goes through my little grommet, dealy bobber, doohickey thingy. Through the frame, out this little hole. And then now the fuel pressure regulator is there. And then back to there. Under here, the drive shaft loop is in. Drive shaft is in. I feel like it took every tool I owned to handle this little task. So as usual, I got a little bit of a mess to clean up. It's, uh, it's not like dark late, but it's like almost nine o'clock at night. Pick up these tools. And I don't know if we're gonna get a drive in, uh, but we'll get her down on the ground, hopefully started, hopefully, and at least put it in gear, roll her back and forth. Maybe we'll go out the garage. I don't know, it's gonna take me too long to do this probably. As you can see, I don't have headlights, so I ain't going very far, but I wanna see if the clutch works and uh, something like that. The never ending story here. Mess is cleaned up, car is still on the ramps. Luckily, I had some oil sitting here, so I remembered I need to put gear oil in the transmission. I don't think I ever completely drained the transmission, but having it out and spilling it around, I gotta check it anyways. And then of course, the rear end is brand new, so it has no fluid in it. The problem I just realized with that is, I'll show you, didn't really get 
like I said before, much for instructions from quick performance, but to give you this little tag on it, it tells you to break in and it says ADW90 non-synthetic GL5 posi additive, no. Pretty much everyone I looked at had some sort of posi additive and then I found this Pennzoil and it didn't, didn't say anything about posi additive. I didn't think it did. And then I started looking at the fine print and it says limited slip capability. So I don't know if that's posi additive or not. Uh, the other thing is, I was reading it could take between three and five quarts to fill this thing, I guess. I just grabbed two thinking two's probably enough, but maybe it's not enough. I was gonna put the oil in it tonight, but I think it's Sunday night. I think I'll wait till tomorrow and make a call to either Wave Track or Quick Performance or somebody just to make sure this little bit of limited slip stuff is okay. Or if I need to get something else, I'm still gonna like take the car down and then uh, start it and see if the clutch works, I think. Oh, and for the transmission, I have the Borg Warner T10 and you're supposed to use, everything said 7590 or 8090, 80, I don't know, but it has to be GL4. I don't even know what that means, but the rear end wants GL5 and the transmission needs GL4. I could not find GL4 hardly anywhere. They had this at Napa and I think it was supposed to be either 75 or 80, 90 is what was recommended for the transmission. I've read that people were using this because they couldn't find the GL4 anywhere else. And I guess the GL5 has some sort of additive that is harmful to the little brass synchros in the transmission or something, which I probably never knew before and was probably putting that in there. And uh, that's probably why my, my synchros are going out on it already. Anyways, little tech tip for you. GL4 if you got an old school transmission, according to the internet. All right, I'm back. It's like 11 o'clock at night. I just hooked up the fuel pump and I had one fuel leak because the me didn't tighten the last uh, fitting. I'm gonna try to crank it up real quick. Uh, see if it starts, make sure it still starts. I wanna see if the tack's working and then uh, see if she goes forward and backward a little bit. Here comes the world's loudest and most obnoxious fuel pump. I might have to do something about this. Holly Blue, this thing is loud. All right, now we gotta make sure. Neutrality. That didn't sound good.